Hey everybody, as you saw from the opening slide, today's discussion is going to be about water. Um, we're going to be looking at sections 3.1 and 3.2 out of Campbell Biology, so let me tell you what you need before we get going. We're going to start out with our objectives. These are the three things you need to know by the end of this video. So the first thing is to be able to explain the importance of polarity and hydrogen bonding in the behavior of water. Second thing you need to know. Describe the four emergent properties of water. Emergent just means the properties that make water different from other substances. And you need to be able to discuss water transport in plants. So those are our three major things. Let's get into it. First thing, and this is probably the most important thing to the rest of our discussion. Water is a polar molecule. Now let's talk a little bit about what it means that water is a polar molecule. We all know the formula for water is H2O. We've got our oxygen right here. Here's our two little hydrogen molecules. And these guys are covalently bonded to each other. All that means is that they share electrons. Now, in our little sharing pair, oxygen is kind of the bully. He's very greedy. He likes his electrons. So because he's a big greedy atom, he pulls most of the electrons towards himself. Our hydrogens, they're kind of like poor little nerdy kids at lunch. They want to hold their lunch money, but they keep losing it. So as the oxygen, is pulling the electrons towards itself. Because electrons are negative, it gets a negative charge. Hydrogen, because it's losing its negative electrons, gets a positive charge. Our molecule is polar. All that means is that it has a positive side and a negative side. Now, this is really important in the formation of what we call hydrogen bonds. You can see right here on our little diagram that water is able to form hydrogen bonds with four other molecules. All a hydrogen bond is, is a weak interaction between the negative oxygen and the positive hydrogen. Just remember opposites attract. It's a total dating cliche, but it's true. So opposite oxygen attract to positive hydrogen. They form up a weak bond known as a hydrogen bond. Those hydrogen bonds are the whole reason that water is different from all other molecules on Earth. So let's talk about some of the ways that water is different. Here are your four properties that you need to remember. The first one, cohesion and adhesion. Second one is going to be moderation of temp temperature, the ability to moderate temperature. It is less dense in its solid state, a very rare property. And the fourth one, if it'll come up, is that it is the solvent of life, which means that it will dissolve most anything and is critical for our survival. So let's talk about these individually. The first one, cohesion and adhesion. Now a couple words to remember here, cohesion, adhesion. Cohesion just means that something is sticking to itself. So think of it as a sports team. A good sports team is a cohesive unit. The players stick together, they cooperate, they work together. So water is a cohesive molecule. It sticks to itself. One water molecule sticks to another. Adhesion means that something sticks to something else. So this means that water will stick to other things. Every time you get out of the shower, you see this. Water adheres to your body. That's why you need a towel to dry off. Now, this is really important in water transport in plants. Like we talked about, that is one of our objectives. So <clears throat> let's discuss it just a little bit. Down here in the soil, of course, we've got water, but our whole plant is in need of that water. So how do we get the water from down here in the soil all the way up the trunk to the top of the tallest leaves? The thing about plant anatomy you need to know is that all leaves have got a pore or many pores in them called stomata. Stomata are openings to the outside environment through which gases pass back and forth and through which water evaporates. Now that's going to be very important. This little pore right here is letting water evaporate out of it all of the time. Each time one of those little water molecule leaves, it pulls on all of its friends that blow it, that are below it. There's a continuous chain of water molecules from the top of the leaf all the way down to the bottom of the root. Now because they are cohesive, they stick together, every time one of those little water molecules leaves, it pulls its buddies up behind it. Now the second part of this model that's important is adhesion. If we just had cohesion, the water would be pulling up, but the weight of it would pull it back down. So as water travels up through our xylem, which are like little tubes in our plant, the water adheres to the sides of the xylem, which keeps it from sliding backwards. So in our model here, water moves up the plant because cohesion is pulling the chain up every time a water molecule leaves through the stomata. Adhesion is keeping it from sliding back down the stem. The other thing this is important for is surface tension, if we can get our model to go there. 
forgive me. There we go. Surface tension. Because of cohesion, water has a skin on top of it. Surface tension is just the ability of a liquid to keep things from breaking its surface. So this is what's allowing that paper clip to float on the top. It allows water striders to stride and it makes belly flops hurt. Our next emergent property we need to talk about is the moderation of temperature. This is probably one of the more complicated properties, but let's get into it just a little bit. First, you need to know the difference between heat and temperature. Heat is just energy. Heat is how quickly an atom is moving back and forth. Temperature is the measurement of that movement. So the faster an atom is moving, the more heat it has and the higher the temperature will be. Now, in general, because heat is a measure of energy, the bigger a body of water or a tree or whatever the object is, the more heat it has because there's more atoms, which means it has more energy. Now, water has a very high specific heat. All that means is it takes a lot of energy to get those atoms to speed up so that their temperature goes up. The reason that it takes a bunch of energy to get water to change temperatures is because of all those hydrogen bonds we talked about. Now, as water is absorbing energy, those hydrogen bonds are breaking and forming. Generally, if it's absorbing energy, the hydrogen bonds are breaking. The temperature of that water won't change until the hydrogen bonds are broken and those atoms actually start moving around more quickly. So if you take water and subject it to heat, it will heat up much more slowly than the land around it because the water is absorbing heat without the temperature changing any. Um, this also relates to evaporative cooling. Now we know evaporate means for a water or other liquid to change from the liquid state to the gas state. As you are outside, right now it's probably 105 degrees and 90% humidity, you'll be outside and you'll start sweating. Now, on your skin, you've got a layer of water. All the water is absorbing heat from your body. The water that absorbs the most heat starts moving around most quickly and evaporates off and takes off into the atmosphere. Now, this is good for you because those hot water molecules that are evaporating into the atmosphere are taking the heat from your body with them. So the water absorbs the heat from your body, the molecules speed up, and then they take off, taking the heat with them, hopefully leaving you just a little bit cooler. The third one we need to talk about is that ice floats. Now this doesn't seem like a big deal because you see it in your everyday life, but if you're a fish, it is a very big deal that ice is less dense than water. Now, a couple key things to remember. As substances cool down, generally their atoms slow down and pack together, which means you have more of them in a smaller area, making that substance more dense. Now, this happens in water as you cool it all the way down towards 4 degrees Celsius. Once you hit 4 degrees Celsius, that is the slowest water atoms will move and still be liquid, and therefore it is the most dense that water will become. Now, after 4 degrees Celsius, something magical starts to happen. Those little water molecules start arranging themselves into a little crystal structure, which means that the hydrogens start bonding with all of the oxygens, and they form a crystal, which is a regular repeating pattern. Now, this regular repeating pattern is less dense than the liquid water. So because it's less dense, this means that ice floats, and it also means that ponds freeze on top, and that top layer of ice forms a protective barrier against the outside elements. So for our ponds up in the Arctic, the top foot might freeze, and outside it could be negative 20 degrees, but in the pond, that water is not gonna be any colder than four degrees as long as it is still liquid. So if you're a fish, that makes you a happy camper. Final property that we need to talk about here is that, forgive me, water is the solvent of life, which means that it can dissolve just about anything. Now, if you look at our little diagram that we got here, you can see we have got a sodium ion. It was probably once part of a chlorine molecule. This is where the polarity of water comes into play. Remember that we've got our positive hydrogens, we've got our negative oxygens. When you put that salt into water, water immediately goes to work tearing this salt molecule apart. All of the negative oxygens pair up against the positive sodium. All of the positive hydrogens pair up against the negative chlorine. And they wrap those molecules up, or those ions, this is an ion, they wrap the ions up in what's called a hydration shell, which means that they essentially surround it and cut it off from its partner. It can't pair up anymore. So 
anytime that water can get a hold of something that is either ionic, which means that it forms positive or negative ions, or it is a polar molecule, meaning it has polar or positive and negative ends, it's going to be able to pair up positive to negative and pull that thing apart. So that is why water is able to dissolve any polar or ionic substance. The next thing that's important about water and the way it interacts is that it forms hydrophobic interactions. Hydro, water, phobic, fearing. This occurs when you have water paired up against a substance that is nonpolar, which means it is completely balanced in its charge. Because it's completely balanced, it can't pair up with water, it can't hook up with the positive or negative, so what water will do is it will form a nice little bead on top. You've seen this anytime you've seen rain on a leaf, like there in the picture, or rain on your coat, or something like that. The other thing that water can do is form hydrophilic interactions. Hydro, again, water, philic, loving. This is gonna happen anytime you have a molecule that is either ionic or polar, drop it into water or water gets on it and water starts pairing up with the positive and negative ends. It loves water. It has got a, I don't know, a love of water. Forgive me for being redundant, but just remember hydrophilic, water loving, these are things that can generally dissolve in water. So that is your quick crash course into all things water related. Hope it was helpful and we'll see you next time on our Lab 207 webcast.